Did you know only about 5 to 7% of the ocean has been explored? And it's estimated that there's still around 80 to 90% of the ocean species left to be discovered? How is this possible? What is lurking in the deepest part of the ocean? And how can I discover a new fish and name it Miranda, the queen of the sea? Hi, I'm Miranda Cosgrove. Welcome to the STEM Loft, where the landlord said it wasn't haunted and was honestly really weird about it. I know you're all excited to get to the bottom of the ocean and talk deep sea creatures. But before we do, we'll need to map out our journey. Our destination is the Mariana Trench, seven miles below sea level. Now, that might not seem like a lot, but let me put this into perspective for you. If you put Mount Everest at the bottom of the Mariana Trench, its peak would still sit around 1.3 miles or 7,000 feet below sea level. Gasp. Now that we have established the length of our journey, let's start our adventure in the sunlit zone. This is the zone where the most visible light exists and extends from the surface to 660 feet below. Just a few of the animals you might find here are sharks, killer whales, jellyfish, sea turtles, seals, and stingrays. These are sea life classics, the top hits, if you will. Now, Let's dive around 3,300 feet deeper to the twilight zone, where temperatures stay close to freezing and the water pressure can reach 1,500 pounds per square inch. There's very little light that comes through in the twilight zone, hence the name. The lack of light has caused animals to adapt to swimming around and living in almost total darkness. Some start to develop bioluminescence, allowing them to glow and, in a sense, create their own light source. I know you Twilight Zone fish feel so special with your bioluminescence, but can you do this? That's right. Who needs bioluminescence when you have technology? Their eyes also become larger compared to those in the sunlit zone, and they point upwards, which scientists believe is to see possible food against the dim light. And get this, in recent studies, it suggested that the biomass of fish in the twilight zone is more than the rest of the ocean's biomass combined. There might be even more twilight zone fish avoiding us humans, which I get. I mean, we did invent sushi after all. So with all that biodiversity, what types of sea friends can we find here? You can find microscopic bacteria and the enemy of some crab that owns a restaurant under the sea, zooplankton. Also, there are tons of really interesting looking animals, like the deep sea dragonfish with fangs embedded with nanocrystals that make its bite stronger than a shark. And the mola mola, also known as the sunfish. It can weigh nearly 5,000 pounds and can grow as big as a pickup truck. Now, let's talk giant. Who can forget about the giant oarfish? Yep, the same one you sold to Nook or CJ for some major bells. The oarfish is also the world's longest bony fish, coming in at about 65 feet. Wow. Another Twilight Zone inhabitant we might see is the barrel eye fish. This fish has two bright green eyes inside of its transparent head. Yep, I said transparent. You can look through its head and into its fishy eyes, and those fishy eyes allow it to collect more light. Now, you're probably thinking, those are some pretty creepy creatures. No way can they get any creepier than that. But oh, they can. Let's keep diving between 3,280 feet to about 13,135 feet to the midnight zone where no sunlight is able to reach this depth. In the midnight zone, you might see some animals that are able to travel between the surface to depths of 6,000 feet, like the narwhal, who dives to these depths up to 15 times a day in search of food. Even more impressive, the Cuvier's beaked whale can dive 9,800 feet down, which makes it the deepest dive documented of any mammal. Prepare yourself, things are about to get weird. Okay, close your eyes. Now, what do you see when I say goblin shark? Does it look something like this? Pretty close, right? Their large snout is covered with specialized organs that help it sense electric fields created by other fish, and its mouth is filled with jagged teeth that literally come out of their heads to eat their prey. In fact, they have so many teeth, they can't even fit them all in their mouth. A famous inhabitant of the Midnight Zone is the deep sea angler fish. This fish has a gelatinous body and an enormous head and a giant mouth filled with super sharp translucent teeth. 
They have a little fishing rod on the top of their heads that uses bioluminescence to lure prey towards them. So if you're ever in the midnight zone and see a little flashing light, don't investigate. Okay, so let's continue on into the abyssal zone. Not to be confused with the abysmal zone. This is the least explored part of the ocean. The pressure here is about 600 times that of what we experience on land. The environment here is extreme, but it doesn't mean there aren't sea creatures who have figured out a way to survive here. Those that can survive in the abyssal zone depend on what's called marine snow. It's basically organic material that has fallen down onto the ocean floor. Animals here have evolved to have a slower metabolism and require less oxygen to survive. They also move slowly to conserve energy. One of those slow-moving animals is the sea pig, which is a type of sea cucumber. They comprise more than 95% of the total weight of animals on the deep sea floor. They have puffy legs and plum round pinkish bodies, hence the name sea pigs. And these little guys could fit in the palm of your hand as they're only about four to six inches long. They're cute, but they also kind of look like they would eat through my skull and devour my thoughts. But they don't do that. They just look like they could. Dumbo octopus live at depths between 13 to 14,000 feet deeper than any other known octopus. They have cute fins on the top of their heads that look like little elephant ears, and they use those to hover over the sea floor and search for food. They kind of look like a child's drawing of an octopus, which means they're perfect. Our final stop is the Hadal Zone. It's 20 to 30,000 feet below sea level. More people have been to the moon than the Hadal Zone. So it makes sense that we know very little about life in these deep, hostile environments. The most well-known area of the Hadal Zone is the Challenger Deep, which is located in the Mariana Trench, the deepest known spot on Earth, 36,200 feet below the surface. But even at these depths, animals have figured out a way to survive in these extreme circumstances, like amphipods, who have been found as deep as 29,856 feet. These crustaceans survive on debris that has fallen to the ocean floor. And snailfish, which are translucent, gelatinous fish. That means you can see all of their inner organs. And the deepest fish we know about is the cusk eel, which was found at depths of 27,000 feet. Even though it has eel in the name, it's actually part of the fish family. This fish can be found not just in the Hadal zone, but also the sunlit zone, which means it's able to survive in different pressures and temperatures. It's also translucent and has two tiny deep set eyes, which are believed to be non-functioning. They kind of look like a regular fish that got lost and now is just too embarrassed to leave the deep ocean. So what did you think of our journey? It's mind-blowing to see life thrive from the sunlit zone to the deepest, darkest depths of the Hadal zone. There's so much unknown life to discover in our oceans. So while we dream of finding life outside our planet, in the meantime, we could learn so much from the strange animals we have hidden here on Earth. Except maybe the goblin sharks. We should just mind our own business with that one. Hey, it's Miranda Cosgrove, your favorite host of Mission Unstoppable. I'm the only host. And if you want to watch awesome STEM videos and exclusive Mission Unstoppable clips, just make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell.